Welcome to Six Picks Music Club, a music podcast for people who used to really be into Incubus. You're listening to Six Picks Music Club. I'm Dave, and with me are Jeffro and Russ, and we're your hosts for the music podcast where we pick six songs around a topic that we've picked for the week. Thanks for being part of the show and making Six Picks Music Club your first listen today, where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every other week on any podcast platform. Leave a five-star review, like the video on YouTube, comment anything below in the YouTube, and let us know what you think. What's up, guys? How we doing, Jeffro? Russ? Doing good, man. It's nice to be back. Yeah, totally. Good to see you guys. And like every other week before we get started on our adventure, we've got to find the password to open up the clubhouse. Who's got the sauce this week? Chocolate chicken bones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Delicious. Very nice. All right, everybody get in there. Come on, listener, and get your ass in here, too. When I buy something expensive, I don't want it to be better than the cheap thing, because then that means I have to continue buying it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that's funny. And it was about underwear that I just bought. It's now that your balls have, have touched the uh, the hand-spun cotton of 600 count or whatever. Yeah, they're just boxer briefs, you know, typical, but there's just like extra soft and they're not that weird like athletic spandex that uh, doesn't breathe. Yeah. It's like, these are like very soft and they don't ride up somehow on my thunder thighs, which all undies do. So they don't ride up. They don't roll like the waistband doesn't roll under my girth when I sit wow. down. And I don't know why we haven't thought about this in the boxer industry before. OK, does it have a little sock to put your penis in? Does it have like a little compartment? <laughs> No, you you can get those on Church Street up here though, like right next to the Starbucks I go to. There they have those like banana boats, um, banana hammocks. No, but like they make the 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 boxes that have like the little the tuck it in kind of area. Oh, there, there's not an official and preformed tuck it in area on these. It's just like it's still just the extra material that's that allows your bulge to bulge. Sure. But what they did do on the crotch, this it's genius. It's just a it's just an elastic that goes straight across. That's a light elastic. And you just flap that down and your whole junk easily pops out. So uh. it's just like a flap and then you just plop it down and it's out and it's free. It's not like you don't have to do the weird thing you have to do with other boxer briefs. You have to pull it to the side. Pull, pull yeah. it diagonally. It's like the elastic on regular undies is like in a hypotenuse or something. <laughs> you have to like stretch it down and it's always too tight. And so you're like trying to jam your wiener through there and it's just so uncomfortable. And then when you do get it through there, it's like it's trying to close back. And so it's cinching you up it restricts your flow yeah yeah just the whole situation is about this these guys it's just called man-made not a sponsor but you just pull yeah. the flap down and your whole junk is out and it's just that easy man that sounds very utilitarian it is and uh <laughs> but so here's the rub though is that those motherfuckers cost 30 dollars a pop Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I am not, I'm used to $30 gets me 10 at least <laughs> undies. So, you know what? I have a, uh, maybe if you like get a pair of scissors and cut a strip through the the old ones and then get one of those slap bracelets, you can just kind of pop it and it'll like pull away. So, you yeah, have a, just do a you little. You can make it yourself. <laughs> just a little. It's like a roll up uh, door. Home engineer. Yeah. Just. <laughs> This is what happened when I found comfortable jeans for the first time. Like I always used to wear just like ranch land husky pants and they were like I was starting a fucking brush fire with my thighs just just sort of scraping. Um it's it, they're just like so harsh those jeans. And then I discovered through like I don't know my wife's mail order or whatever. It was like a clothes club. I don't I don't know what they're called. You probably know the names Stitch of Stitch Fix or something, right? Something. Yeah. Clo Clothes Club. <laughs> <laughs> Clothes Club. 
Clothes Club. Ginny's Clothes Club. Welcome. Yeah, but they like called me and they're like, what kind of stuff are you interested in? And it was like an actual person talking. And I was like, I don't know, man. I wear jeans and shirts and stuff, you know, <laughs> like, and he was like, oh, OK, like what kind of and anyway. So we get to the bottom of it and they send me some pants and they fit perfect, which is unusual for me. And they were like wearing sweatpants like they're just so fucking soft. And I was like, oh, but those jeans cost a hundred and twenty dollars, whereas my jeans before cost twenty five dollars. And so I hate that I have to buy those stupid fucking jeans, but there's no other way now. You know, I think at this point in your life, you've earned it, you know, like this is this is where you get to treat yourself and say, like, I'm worth that. You know, I'm worth being able to sit down with my phone in my pocket in a pair of jeans <laughs> right, and not crack the screen. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I can't do that in my Levi's and I've had the bitches for, you know, 10 years. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I actually a couple on a couple of occasions because I had read that this helps when I would get new jeans, like the real uncomfortable Levi types, I would go and sit or lay in the bathtub with them on Hmm. because that was supposed to form them to your body better. I don't know if that worked or didn't work, but (laughs) I I was trying anything. I was desperate (laughs) for comfy jeans. Hmm. Yeah, I think you got to go with the raw denim on that to make that work. I have heard that, but my understanding is that it just like shrinks them to the size of your body. And so like there is no room for fluctuation at that point. It's how you make your own skinny jeans. Yeah. Oh, is that really? So it was having the opposite effect of what I wanted. (laughs) (laughs) Might be why you're starting brush fires. No wonder I remained in discomfort for the duration. <laughs> They're like, those are weird pants where the calves are bigger than the thighs. What's, what's going on with those pants? Um, speaking of just things that are uncomfortable, is this just a me thing or are restaurant chairs getting more uncomfortable over time? My body style, for what it's worth, I know what all the listeners are thinking. This is a large man that's getting older and getting larger. Here's the thing, guys. I've been the same size for like 25 years. I'm big, but I have not gotten bigger. I have this size, you know? Anyway, it's the chairs that are changing is my point. (laughs) This is also coming from the guy who says that Gen Z isn't funny and they don't even laugh at jokes. (laughs) The world around me is changing. I'm not changing. (laughs) I'm not changing. The world is changing. (laughs) That's fair. That's a fair connection to make, Russ, and I'll allow it. But what I am saying is that I defend this. I think that chairs are intentionally more uncomfortable because they want people to leave. Mm. Okay, just imagine any hip brunch. It's got it's got a little metal chair with two sides that go down at the bottom of your butt, right? Those two little thin sides, but not armrests. So you're sitting there and basically what they've done is create a situation on a small chair where your buttocks has to fit through the little tiny rails on the sides. Uh Uh-huh. But those rails are made for normal size body mass index is quite low people, right? The biscuit butted people of the world. And the rest of us, those are super uncomfortable. Am I, have, do you guys have no experience with these chairs? I, I, well, so my thing is that now, uh, I, I'm at a shape where booths are uncomfortable. Like, I don't want to sit in a booth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to sit anywhere. <laughs> all, of, all of it's bad. <laughs> like, I prefer an uncomfortable too- <laughs> chair to a, <laughs> To a, to a booth any day of the week because then I'm trapped. I don't think my body type fits any of these problems, I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, I guess not, Russ. Mr. Runner guy. So you really have, you really don't have any problems with any chairs in re- these chairs, man. I, I'm, I know I'm not the only one out there. Listener, hit me up with some support. Fuck Russ. Chairs are uncomfortable. <laughs> All you that think chairs are uncomfortable, send us a message. Check the show notes or whatever. 
<laughs> Jeff um, knows how podcasts work, listener. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, tonight we have a pretty fun topic. We are going to our musical closets and pulling out some skeletons, picking songs that we might consider guilty pleasures. What I was kind of thinking here was songs that I secretly love that would maybe I would be hesitant to share with you all. So uh, for, you know, whatever rhyme or reason, how'd, how'd you guys pick your songs? Well, it might not surprise you, Dave, that I kind of have a theory of guilty pleasures. Do you want to hear about it? Please give us your theory. The reason that they're guilty is that you like a piece of music, but you don't like any of the cultural aspects that come with it. And mm. so, and, th and that can be an expression of your ego when you're a young person, you're like, I want to fit into this slot. And so I can't listen to Destiny's Child because I'm supposed to be into alternative music. So mm. there's that version of it. Okay. But another version of it is like maybe... Like the other, like as you age or it's kind of unrelated to ego, the you don't like the fan base or you don't like what they mean to society or you don't like their stance on things. And so you might kind of like their music. Oh, Morgan Wallen's pretty cool to me, I guess. It's that you don't like all of the cultural loadings of the band, but you like the actual tune. I think that's really, really good, man. I think that's hits the nail on the head like i think that's pretty much exactly it thank you just for me tonight and the way i picked i you know i like to look at things from two different angles so for my picks tonight i picked uh one song by a band that i don't really listen to other than like that particular song and then another song that the band is best known for though that pick is more to represent the band as a whole you know kind of and, and a band that i listen to more extensively i guess well, it should be an interesting uh, episode. So we have a little bit of a change in our format here, listener. We haven't revealed to each other what the songs are that we're going to be playing tonight. Uh, we usually do that in advance so we can kind of uh, hear the song and, and, and be ready to talk about it. But tonight, I feel like these are all going to be songs that we know. And um, I think, really, the, the fun part is going to be admitting them to each other and then having them shit on us. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's as good a time as any to get into our main topic. Do we have any volunteers to go first tonight or, uh, I can go first. All right, Russ. Yeah. Tell us what you got for us tonight, sir. So as I was saying, I, I broke up my picks one based on kind of a song from a band that everybody knows. And then another one, I mean, both songs, I think everybody knows, but one was more for the song and one was more for the band. And I'm going to start with the song. I'm in so much suspense right now. I mean, so, I really am. I, I just because I cannot wait to know what this is. I compiled a list of like contenders for like what I thought would be a good guilty pleasure song for me. And, and I, I had a hard time choosing what it was. So the way I picked it was I made a playlist. I rolled the windows down and I slow cruised through the grocery store parking lot with them playing really loud to see which one embarrassed me the most. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, it was. Uh, that was a really that, hard and stressful time for me. It's so, yeah. amazing. <laughs> Well, you were also in the grocery store parking lot for seven and a half hours, so people started to get freaked out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they sent the cart boy out after you. <laughs> so my first pick was introduced to me by my wife years and years and years ago. It, it wasn't ever a song that we would like sit down and listen to, but it was one of those songs that just was always play while we were out. And uh, and then we would always end up dancing. And I'm not even a, a dancer at all, but we were just one of those things we would always end up dancing to. So my first guilty pleasure song is Dancing Queen by ABBA. Oh, I, okay. oh, I thought okay. about ABBA, dude. That's such a good song. <laughs> <laughs> but I get it is guilty because uh -huh. you can't yeah, and, just listen uh -huh. to it out loud in public. And when right. you do, you feel really embarrassed. I felt very embarrassed. So. <laughs> dude, awesome. Dude, that's such a good fucking song. And I get it though. It is like it is guilty. Cause I think I think this has to do with our masculinity, right? We it's Oh yeah. Well, but I I'm gonna go back to, to uh to 
to what you were saying about like culturally, like where I feel like I stand, like, you know, I go to punk shows, I hang out with like that crowd and whatever. And, like, <laughs> yeah. this is not that. Yeah. You know? But you're also <laughs> like, a feminist. So, I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, but it's just, you know, I mean, it's different. Like, I, like I, I wouldn't not go to an ABBA show. Like if I was going with my wife, but like, I wouldn't, it's just like, it was, it felt very interesting. To, you wouldn't go to an ABBA show by yourself. Probably not. That's the thing. I might. I might. Yeah. I would go to an ABBA show by myself. I would. I think that yeah. would be f- pretty fun. But <laughs> it, 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 I can't, I can't though visualize myself bumping dancing queen in a parking lot. <laughs> like while I know people are looking at me, like I, that, that is hard. Cause I would be like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, unless, just, I, unless it was like the exact right person, I wouldn't want them to hear me listening to that. It was soul shattering. <laughs> say, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, I, I, I really thought I was at a point where like, oh, I can't get embarrassed anymore. But that is not true. I can definitely. You know what? Dave Russ went method for this. app. He I'm so impressed. I am so impressed. Yeah, I am very yeah. impressed by your process. Like well, thank, that was yes, thank very you. much so. <laughs> very thoughtful. And I think I think that's yeah, a good bet, bet payoff, you know, if like we ever have one of those. It's like they there's a two hour playlist you got to go run through in the parking lot of a Sam's Club or something. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, ABBA is one of the we've talked about this on the pod before, but part of the Swedish, they just come in and dominate the airwaves. Oh, yeah. Like some of these Swedish yeah. bands, they come in and they out America, American music like they just crush us and leave born of disco and rose to pop royalty like yeah so it's impossible to follow abba's dancing queen which is by any account catchy as fuck but would embarrass all of us in some way or another so that's a good yeah guilty pleasure pick but i'm gonna try okay all right i was ready to fall on the grenade but yeah you go ahead i'm gonna try to follow it just with something that's so weird so weird and different than that and so the discordance might be good okay but it is it fits the criteria that you've established russ which is it would be very hard for me to drive with the windows down and have people know that i'm listening to this (laughs) that is that is the new the new baseline (laughs) it is but for totally different reasons for totally different reasons this is and you have to look it up, but Insane Clown Posse's Hocus oh Pocus God. off of 1997's <laughs> Great Malenko, which is one of their wild card albums. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Holy crap. I just uh, I heard a story about um, someone who was working up at Red Rocks during a, an Insane Clown Posse show, and they've all come decked out in their in their gear and all made up and whatnot. And, yeah, the uh, Juggalos. She- <clears throat> yeah, Juggalo's out in force. And uh, she had to be the one that said, hey, um, I know you just ordered a beer, but legally I can't sell alcohol to anyone who's wearing face paint because I can't verify your license. <laughs> no way. She <laughs> yeah. had to deny all the Juggalo's beer. <laughs> Yeah. What a terrible and, job. <laughs> and she said they ended up being the nicest people. They were like so cool about it. They're like, oh, cool. I'll just get a soda. <laughs> Okay, so just a couple things about that. First off, you guys know that it's fucking awesome, right? <laughs> I've never heard it's that awesome. song before. I've never heard that it's song so before. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it really is. It's legit good to me. The whole album is good. It's so weird. So the thing is, is like I, like, I like certain things a lot, and I like kind of weird occult things a little bit in my metal or in my hard rock this is like still pretty far afield for me like it's it gets really sadistic and strange at times on the record (laughs) and you're like "Ooh, i don't feel good but like (laughs) this song the bass line is great it's like the magic you know carpet and the and the kind of like clown acid trip that's going on and i like all that stuff it's impossible to with a straight face tell people that you're not a juggalo 
<laughs> but an ICP fan, like I oh. like I like ICP uh, like a normal amount. I'm not obsessed with them, <laughs> and I don't travel everywhere with face paint. Tell me, Jeff, what is a normal amount of liking ICP? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. You can't just you can't just like. It's not accepted in the culture, I don't think, to just mm. be a casual be a ICP casual fan, fan. Yeah. which I am. That's who I am. <laughs> but like, if you listen to it, you're automatically branded a juggalo. You're like part of their their circus, and so that's why it's kind of a guilty pleasure for me. Okay, for for those of our listeners who don't know what a juggalo is, can you please inform us, Jeff? Juggalos are people that follow ICP. They're like people that go see fish concerts, the whatever they call them, fish heads. They're, it's like those people, but for Insane Clown Posse. And they they come from all over the place. They're, you know, they're nationwide. They usually wear black and white clown makeup and dress with like, they still wear Jinkos, I think. So they did never change that. Um, <laughs> those are coming back, man. <laughs> well, they they kept him alive for the twenty years so that uh, to bridge the gap. Yeah, they went the whole twenty five years still wearing them, and then everybody else is like, "Oh, those are cool again." Does everyone give uh, the Juggalos a round of applause for keeping the Jinkos alive while they can come back in style. <laughs> exactly. Are they gonna go the opposite way and start wearing skinny jeans just to say like, you know, yeah, we're not yeah, be on the trend? Say, no, there's no way. There's no way a Juggalo <laughs> would wear skinny jeans. You don't understand. Not for less than one hundred and twenty dollars a pair. Just take a bath, dude, with them on. That's all. Right. The other thing that's associated with ICP is the the very inexpensive soft drink, Fago. They yeah. love Fago. They spray it on the crowd. The crowd brings Fago. So it's like this whole, you know, this whole part of the Juggalo culture is drinking this soft drink. Anyway. Have you, have you um, ever had it? I have had Fago, yeah, but not as a Juggalo. I've just had it's it. It's just Juggalo light. <laughs> Could you imagine though, Russ? Like by 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 your process, if I rolled around <laughs> in the Tom Thumb parking lot with that shit playing, I have a buddy that is a a millionaire lawyer who's also a referee in college football. Okay, I love him. He is one of my best friends in high school, if not my best friend. And we drove around listening to that, but we always did it. It was just me and him. <laughs> we never told anybody that we were listening <laughs> to that. <laughs> but the windows we, were always up unless you're on the highway. <laughs> yeah, you could tell I was rapping every single word to the song. Like I, I know that I know all of the words memorized because of that. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, guilty pleasure for sure. Oh uh, shit. No, that's funny, man. That's funny. So I never got that's to good. like really get into, uh, the ICP because I, I was, uh, a day one, uh, diehard Slim Shady fan and they had beef. And so I was like out of respect for beef. Mr. Mathers. Um, I didn't, I, didn't I think engage. you know whose team I was on. It's very clear. It's very clear, yeah. but, um, <laughs> and no, their and diss tracks are way funnier than his. <laughs> They're so funny. First time I heard that song, that's pretty rocking. It made me think of what it would be like driving through a parking lot of a church with like the Bloodhound Gang playing, which was almost <laughs> a pick that I went with. But I didn't think that, that one was really like as embarrassing as as I, I needed it to be. This one's going all the way back to the uh, CC's Pizza uh, post. Oh yeah, soccer the sock game. puppet videos. Right, right, right. So we're watching MTV in the in the in the in the dining room of CC's Pizza in 1991, and a little song comes on that uh, that blew my mind. And and I, when I played it back uh, during this exercise, it still made me smile. So I was like, yeah, okay, I can I can live with this. But uh, this particular particular song is uh, by Marky Mark in the Funky Bunch, and it's Good Vibrations. <laughs> I didn't even think about this song. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> That's good. I, I still kind of love it. It's so silly, but but I, I love it. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, so I was a wee lad in 1991, and um, the video was so suggestive. 
It's like oh, he is yeah. in a bed making out with Tracy Bingham, and it's just everything. Everyone's dancing in water. Just it's all splashy and sweaty, and then he's all just like boxing. And he actually trained with um with uh, Mickey Ward uh to learn about how to box for this video. And then like years later, he would portray Mickey Ward in that movie, The Fighter, which is kind of funny. Well, I for me, I feel like this does also pass uh, Russ's driving through the parking lot slowly with the windows down test. <laughs> yeah. I feel like this is like <laughs> bum yep. bum 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 bum. <laughs> Just singing along. This is like p- part of that. Like it's it's in. It's, you can put it in the fi- same file folder as Millie Vanilli for yeah. having really like there are really good musicians behind the music of that song. Like all yeah. the people that are playing piano and putting it all together. Like that's an original tune. And then he's just come on, come on on top of it. But like without that, it's a per- it's a perfectly good. Little song for the night, and like Millie Vanilli is great, you know. The music of Millie Vanilli, it's, it's one of those songs where, like, if someone who didn't know the song saw you listening to it, like, it's still like it dates you perfectly. It's a very dated oh, song, yeah, like, yeah. you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, look at that old guy living the glory days <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. For the listener, for everybody out there, those are three fucking great guilty pleasure picks i don't i'm afraid my second pick isn't gonna hold gonna up, live to up? The, like it's is it yeah. gonna live up but man those are good picks what do you want to you want to fire off the next one or who do you want russ to go next and keep the order Let's just go back to russ yes all keep right the yeah. order going okay so my next pick is is a well-known song for people our age i don't know if the younger crowd knows it i mean i'm sure some do but the younger crowd so the band rose to stardom and <laughs> in 97 they're not listening to us <laughs> my second guilty pleasure song is semi charm life by third eye blind oh. yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah what what does that song clock in at i think ooh god i don't know four maybe four four and a half something like that they pack so much into that song words chords fucking tempo changes and everything that it feels like a really long song even though it's not just because it's just yeah, four and a half. so much that song is just up you know just coming out with so many punches just flying all over the place and you're like whoa I, <laughs> it's a really well put together piece of thing that you cannot listen to in a grocery store with your windows down <laughs> while people look at you you can't this band also goes back to one of your points where like the uh the people who go to the shows and people who like are like yes yeah, third eye blind, like oh man it's like not cool so third eye blind i do i love the band i and i go deep <laughs> i go deep into this band oh yeah like, yo man oh, yeah. yeah for sure and i've seen them a few you know three or four times probably live but the last time we went was at Stubbs, and in front of me were the forty-year-old fucking frat bros, all high-fiving each other oh, and just yeah. being like, "Yeah, this is fucking blah blah blah." Like, ugh, it's. I'm like, oh, this is the worst. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I'm like I'm sucks. embarrassed to be here because of you guys. So I feel like people easily discard Third Eye Blind, like which obviously, right? Dave's never even heard. He's only heard the dude. I like that song. Graduate even more than that song. Could I graduate? I love that song. Gotta get my punk ass off the street. There were five singles (laughs) that like that all charted, I think, off that first record, which, you know, like shot them. Superstardom. Yeah. Was that really off their D-butt record? Yeah. Five. Five singles. Damn. Damn. I think it grouped with other bands uh, at the same time with a similar sound. Like even Justin Timberlake in that Friends with Benefit like calls them, uh, thinks that Closing Time, the semi-sonic song was third eye blind uh-huh. like they just get grouped into that which is like <laughs> that's funny but it, like the thing is steven jenkins doesn't get enough credit for his lyrics like the first two albums aren't just catchy but they like they provided a voice for the youth with like really great lyrics within that album they hit the themes of sex relationships drugs 
suicide with jumper let's just say sure. those are just kind of the the big things but you go deeper into it you've got these songs with outstanding qualities like great songwriting like god of wine and motorcycle drive by and these are just songs that if you're not a fan don't really know because they never you know they don't get played the name of their band how do you feel about that right there's like two ways it can go one's like oh it's like a dick which is possibly true but also like enlightened uh, or whatever so i think it's i think yeah. it's actually a little bit but of both unenlightened because your third eye is blind right or it's a penis <laughs> or it's a penis right <laughs> no but to like circle back to jeff's thing when he was like it's it's so much packed in all at once i'm like you're telling me that the song that's about meth sounds like it was made on meth <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah totally i I had that same thought it was like oh my god like that he wrote that many words and remembers all of them to perform it is like yeah such a meth move <laughs> it's like challenging <laughs> bone thugs move. it's just like yeah that's pretty yeah. impressive <laughs> i'm gonna miss everybody bone 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 now tell me what you gonna do i said i'm gonna come now <laughs> oh, don't I miss my daughter? And then it's a and then it's a hip hop. I'm gonna miss everybody. I'm gonna miss everybody. <clears throat> Sorry, Russ. Sorry. Par for the course, man. Par for the course. All right, I got, I got just one little thing to say. So the third, the third album, which guarantee nobody's heard unless you are a fan of them, called Out of the Vein. It is, it is the the album that like my wife and I kind of bonded over at the time so it will always and forever hold like a special spot in my heart the album itself is like 90 percent about uh stephen jenkins breakup with charlie theron <laughs> and it's like or like the whole relationship whoa he Dang. whoa whoa back it up he <laughs> hooked up with charlie theron dude it was it was uh yeah it was pretty serious and uh and oh she God. was like i don't want to ever get married i'm just gonna like live this life and he was like no i'm gonna trying to tie you down like let's get married let's get married and she was like no nah, i'm fucking done so she ended up leaving him for Stuart townsend because he kind of pushed her away dude if she's not number if she's not number one just coolest like a whole all of it she's funny oh my gosh she can do everything and then i didn't realize there was a dispute between her and tom hardy on the mad max set do you guys hear this yeah i read i read that same thing that they oh, were yeah. icing each other out because he was yeah. always late and she was on time yeah. she was on time and like super disciplined and like she's like you're whatever you're going through is like you're fucking up the production yeah but i like that about her too she works hard yeah. and yeah. uh you know she's like russ's kids she's kind helpful and hardworking. <laughs> so that's what you could be raising you could be raising the next charlie's theron right there both of them you know it's... dude so i have i forgot to tell you about this russ i totally stole that from you and i'll give you credit when they're grown up and they care they recite it and um and i was walking home with this other mom and her two kids like so we we see each other every day during pickup and so we're we're walking in the same direction and they did something that was kind of messed up or so yeah or just like a little out of line so i was like that's not what we do and they both were like kind helpful and hardworking. and this mom <laughs> looked at me like the best thing that she had ever like that performance that they did she just looked at me like oh my god i love that yeah it really that really that's all hilarious. that did happen and i'm not really exaggerating like oh, the, her hilarious. reaction to it it was it was it was like arousal. She loved it so much, but it, they did adorably recite it in unison. At this, you know, they just were like kind, helpful, and hard work, like standing up straight almost. <laughs> so great! All the songs so far have been very catchy songs that I think we all like. And I wonder, this is a, a bit of a departure, and I wonder how this is going to play right now. But I was just going to say, I go occult and strange and crunchy guitars for the sake of it and like sometimes too far down that rabbit hole. But if I'm headed in my other direction, I can sometimes get too twee and like sentimental music. Hmm. And this is this is that it's <laughs> and I can't listen to it in front of other people. So I just. <laughs> Is, no, you have to sit there. No, I will. I will. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, it passes the <laughs> no roll down window test. Easy. Easy peasy. <laughs> but it's because I can't imagine playing this. 
It's cold plays in my place. Cold play in my place. <laughs> oh, oh man. I love it. But there's yeah. no chance in hell I can listen to it while people watch me listen to it. Here's the deal. I listened to Coldplay's first two records. I still listen to them. Yeah. I still yeah. like it. But I And they've sold like 100 million records. So it's not going to hurt them for me to say that I feel like at some point, I just couldn't culturally, I couldn't put up with Chris Martin and Coldplay anymore. He married Gwyneth Paltrow. He named his kid Apple. And he's just so like empire. He's he's earnest empire. It's just, too, it's too much. They started dressing like French revolutionaries and called their album Viva La Vida or whatever. I just, it was like, uh, okay. I love this song. I had the unpopular opinion that Rush of Blood to the Head was a great record in uh, my circle, and, and I got laughed at a number of times. But I think yeah, that was good. people had already I'd, turned their back on them. It had its moment. It was in that 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 budding era of my life when I was just consuming MTV and nothing else. That was all yeah. all that I watched. I was like, oh yeah. Well, okay. the video for this is. Do you remember the video? I can't remember for this Coldplay no, song. Me. What is it? It's just a white room that's like 100% white, like a studio oh, room I that has white now, floors, yeah. white walls, right. white ceiling, and there's nothing else in it. And then they, there, it starts with just drum guy, boom, shh, boom, and then it goes over to guitarist, and he has like what would have been cool baggy pants with like Adidas on, and he's just pew, 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 and then Chris Martin comes running in from like the door of the room and he's like, yeah, how long must it? You're just like, Ugh. Pinch, pinching his <laughs> he's nips. So, <laughs> yeah, he's his just nips. so, he is nips forward. That's the thing with Chris Martin. <laughs> he leads with his nips. Um, <laughs> he does. Um, but yeah, it's just like so drippy and twee and sentimental and mm. and Radiohead was right when they said that it's lifestyle music for women to drink wine to which is what they said <laughs> but I still love it and I would drink wine with those women and listen to Coldplay. With a nice Chablis. Yeah, a Chablis. Yeah, the final thing I'll say about them culturally is I just that name is just the worst to me. Coldplay. <laughs> It's like, what? Okay. And so somebody, so there has been an article, I think, in Rolling Stone about their name and what it is. And it comes from, he had a buddy that was trying to come up with band names. And there was a book of poetry that's a, that was called something, 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 common cold play. And so that was one of his band name ideas. And Chris Martin heard that. And he was like, do you mind if I take that for my band? Before that, the band was called Starfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so it is kind of an upgrade over starfish <laughs> what you're a starfish well keeping kind of in that same era and then circling back to kind of my theme of uh maintaining a sense of white rapperism mm. the last song of our of our picks tonight this one came out in august of 1999 so i was a uh, a wee sophomore. It's uh, MTV again, heavy in the rotation for me. And we'll just start it and we'll talk about it. But uh, the song is by Kid Rock and the song is Cowboy. Good for you, Dave. Oh. Good for you. <laughs> I think you won, Dave. <laughs> I would vote that you're the winner because I was embarrassed just <laughs> listening to it right now. <laughs> Yeah, definitely passes the parking lot test, I think. Um, yeah. Dude, it, pass, one it would is, pass uh... like the car alone test. <laughs> like... <laughs> All right, so I really fell in love with this song later in life because uh, my my wife was in a competitive karaoke league. I remember that. You know, the performance was very big on the thing, and 
So I was always running around with these uh, very performative karaoke people, and I had to have a song that could play with that crowd. And um, this was my karaoke song for about, I don't know, 10 years. It's one of those songs that uh, you listen to it, and it's like, oh, there's a little Skinner in there. There's a little, you know, Southern rock. And then it's all mixed with the hip hop of the day that was the, you know. Didn't people get, like, in the karaoke league, didn't they get worn out with how long you were singing? Because it's just so many fucking words. It's like, It's a long one. Yeah, yeah. It's long. it's, It's a journey. You're just going on the journey with the cowboy going out west. All of the adventures. I think I've talked to you about this. My what I think is the the superior karaoke song. Okay. Like not non tenacious D ones because like okay. I if I want to bring the house down, Wonder Boy, I know all the words. Yeah. Crush That's it. That's important. Yeah. But the superior karaoke song is "Lightning Crashes" by Live. <laughs> it's. Fucking amazing. And just oh, and now you don't, in your mind. Yeah. In your mind, you're like, I don't know, dude. It's a little slow. It's perfect because it starts slow and it's about like a, a fetus and an angel and all this stuff. But then you really get to go, the angel opens her, and you get to go real big with it. And by the end of it, it's really big and rocking. And everybody thinks that it's so fucking badass if you really sell it. Like you can, yeah. Because you're in that, you know how he. What's that guy's name? Ed something. He's so into his lead singer role, and so you kind of have to like <laughs> mimic that performance. It's so much fun, dude. Try it. Try it the next time. Yeah. Do lightning crashes. Okay, it's on my list for certain. Um. But yeah, uh, Houston Press called it one of the 10 worst songs about a cowboy. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of reasons for it. <laughs> well, okay. So you, so I, I love that he says uh, he's straight out the trailer, but like his parents, didn't they own like a dealership in like he's, he came from money, I think. Did he so. come from money? It's all disingenuous. God damn it. I thought it might be real. He's not a man of ethics. Yeah. <laughs> And so, well, he do, he is. Um, I mean, he did shoot all those Bud Light cans. Yeah, he stood up to those Bud Light cans. <laughs> Dude, he's on. There's a videotape, not that I've watched it, but maybe I have, of him and Scott Stapp of Creed getting blowies at the same time in the same room. <laughs> getting blowies together. Well, yeah, that's another one that could be a guilty pleasure there. Yeah. Which is like. All that I need to know about him. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) So this was considered to be one of the first rap country songs. People were considering that at some point. The the considerers were like, take note. (laughs) Everyone, (laughs) are you paying attention? Everyone, listen, we've now got a combination of rap and country. This is for the first time. The considerers have stamped this rap country. Let it be known at this hour of 11 o'clock on a Tuesday. Hey, guys, hey, hold on. We've gotten a telegram from the considerers. What does it say? <laughs> Read it out. <laughs> Kid Rock has released a tune that could only be referred to as rap country. Oh, oh. wow. <laughs> Well, and the impact of that on the country music scene was pretty substantial. And uh, it unfortunately led to the, uh, you know, to artists such as Jason Aldean and Big and Rich. And, uh, you know, Ugh. if we could live in a world without them, I would be fine with that. And it was also, uh, it, it made an appearance on the Oh Brother, Where Art Thou soundtrack, which was, you know, really influential. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> So, Dave, would you say that uh, the the cowboy song is what got you into country music? Uh, no, no, I would say work. Would you say that the cowboy song was what got you not laid during all of high school? <laughs> well, I was not in high school when this song came out. I'll have you know. Were you in college when that song came out? I was. I was indeed. Was I in college? It was ninety nine. I don't think you were. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Thank God I wasn't in college and I decided to like it. That's that is you should feel guilty. Well, shame, shame, shame. 
Dave's okay. like, hey, yeah. do you want to come to my place and smoke a bowl and wind down? And the and the woman at the bar is like, sure, I guess so. That sounds cool. And he's like, hey, have a little. <laughs> <laughs> I love a little Mind if I put on a little music? Is that cool? <laughs> <laughs> Just to set the mood. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, start an escort service for all the wrong reasons. Set up shop at the top of Four Seasons. And you're like, so do you want like an old fashioned or? <laughs> well, that's going to do it for us today at Six Picks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, so no, we got a letter from a listener this week, and uh, oh. uh, yeah, so so Brad in Austin, he wrote in to say, "Hey guys, you are really stupid, but you make me laugh. <laughs> but your picks are soft, especially Dave's. Also, you haven't done any real hardcore bands. The post punk shit isn't just cutting it for me. You should play something off Anchorite's new demo. Yeah, so thanks, Brad. I appreciate that feedback. So if you have a band you want to highlight." Comment on the YouTube or send us an email on the contact page of our website at sixpixmusic.club. I'll tell you what I anyway. don't love about Brad. I'll tell you what I don't love about Brad. Yeah. That I think he's coming at you, Russ. And when somebody comes at Russ, as you know, <laughs> I That's get where my you draw up. the freaking line. Yeah. Yo. Yeah, across you this don't... line, you do not cross. <laughs> So yeah, the okay. In the spirit of this line, yeah, in the spirit of of, of honoring Brad's recommendation, uh, let's let's play a bit of this uh, Anchorite song off their demo that just came out. Uh, this is "Who Makes the Rules," and if you have a band you want to highlight, comment in the YouTube or send us an email at sixpixpod at gmail dot com. And that's gonna do it for us today uh, here at Six Picks Music Club. Special thanks to Shaolin Death Squad for our music. You guys are the best. And thanks, listener, for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time. Until then, play it loud. Keep jamming. This episode of Six Picks Music Club was produced by Alan Massel. <laughs> Edited by Willie Fokup. With special thanks to Dixie Wrecked. Freedom!